I think Edith Greenwood Wyatt represents the best of the future that this industry brings. Where the industry is going to be moving as we look to preserve the assets that we have, to enhance the assets that we have, what society needs in order to really be more sustainable, in order to reduce operations and maintenance costs, and really to attract top talent. People want to work in bright, beautiful, well-lit buildings. You're right about the project. It's a transformative project in its outcome, but it was also a transformative project in its process. And that started with the high-performing green building workshop right. that we had. It was a two-day process. It was really meant to bring everyone together, to get everyone oriented to the building, to get everyone using the same lexicon about how we're actually going to talk about the project for the next three or four years. We came away from that with this list of both energy and water conservation measures and then had to establish a hierarchy of how we were going to study those and find out which ones will make the cut and actually be the ones that would make it into the building. And we worked through that in an iterative way to really determine uh, exterior shading on the building, what were the parameters, what sizes did it need to be, how could we achieve daylighting, all these things work together and we could find out exactly what measurements we needed to hit in order to get the energy performance we wanted out of the building that way. The canopy is a very significant feature of the design of the building that's a collection device for both solar energy and water. The cistern is in the basement. It's a repurposed firing range that was there for the FBI. And so all of that collected water gets used for uh, uh, toilet flushing and irrigation and for the water cooling towers on the roof. But the photovoltaic array is going to provide about 3 to 4 percent of the overall building use. We tried to really right size that. Originally it had been a much larger array, uh, but we brought it down to a size that was both affordable and uh, still provided a good amount of energy for the building during non-peak hours. And then uh, we were able to repurpose all of that money to buy additional scope back into the building. So another huge benefit, I think, from integrated project delivery at Edith Green Wendell Wyatt uh, were some significant wins as it relates to high performance green buildings. We took on initiatives that the federal government gave to us pretty late in the design phase, including smart buildings, including uh, BIM to FIM or facilities information management, uh, and also a very robust and aggressive subcontracting plan uh, and community engagement plan that included everything from apprenticeship training to uh, engaging women and minorities in the trades. One thing that I was asked about repeatedly during the project is diversity, inclusion, and business equity. And I always try to tie it back to business because the more inclusive we are in our business, we're able to retain and recruit the best employees. We're able to attract strong subcontractor participation on the projects, which gives us better pricing and increased innovation. Well, I think everybody that has seen the building, certainly the, the exterior envelope of the building, recognizes that it embodies the energy savings, the water savings goals we all had set at the start of the job. 
But I think the quality is very outstanding. I think part of the quality that's here in this project is also a testament to the workers that worked on it because they took great pride as part of a team, put their best effort forward. What we accomplished in terms of the physical aspect of the project is really great, but it was the experience itself. It was the experience of working as a team. And I think Edith Green is really uh, inspirational for those of us who worked on it. And I'm encouraged to see how it changes our industry as we move forward.